Okay, let's turn our rather silly example of an equivalence relation into something precise. So let's make a little bit more space and then say precisely what was going on here. An equivalence relation on a set of things, so let's call it on a set X, is, well, it's a binary relation, which means that it's a relationship between pairs of things, is a binary relation which I might write as things like uh, A is related to B. So that, that, that little R there is like the blue part, so maybe I'll do it in blue. That stands for some kind of relation between A and B. So this means that they, A is related to B by this relation B, such that the following things are true. So first we need transitivity. So what transitivity says is that for all A, B, and C in X, remember what it said? It said if A is related to B, I haven't really left myself enough space, have I? Okay, do that again, but leave myself more space. Okay, I'll put the for all up here. For all A, B, and C in the set. So here we have, if A is related to B, and B is related to C, then, a has to be related to C. So that's what transitivity says. Symmetry says if A is related to B, then B is related to A. And reflexivity says that A is always related to A. And that's for every A in the set X, right? So it could be B. B also has to be related to B. C has to be related to C. D has to be related to D, and so on. So these are the three conditions that exactly correspond to these things that we just had here. So it's transitivity, symmetry, and reflexivity. So let's have a more mathematical example of one of these things. Oh, the blue is quite fierce and difficult to get off. So we can do congruence mod something. So let's do congruence mod 5. That is to say, I'm going to define uh, A is Where's my blue chalk gone? A is related to B means that A is congruent to B mod 5. Okay. Maybe I should just start by doing saying what that actually means. Okay, so let's instead say that 5 divides B minus A, because that's what we said that congruence actually meant. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try, let's try reflexivity first, because it's going to be easiest. So to show it's reflexive, we have to show that for all numbers A, 5 divides A minus A. Well, that's clearly true, right? Because A minus A is 0. And 5 definitely goes into 0, so it is reflexive. So now let's try symmetry. Let's see if it's symmetric. So what we've got to show is that if 5 divides B minus A, does 5 divide A minus B? Well, that's clearly true as well, right? Because, yes since A minus B is just minus B minus A. So if 5 divides this, then it definitely divides the negative part of it. And so finally, let's do transitivity. If 
5 divides b minus a and 5 divides c minus b does 5 divide c minus a? And the answer, if I can fit it in, is yes, because c minus a, we can express that in terms of c minus b and b minus a, right? Because it equals c minus b plus b minus a. And we know that 5 divides this bit and 5 divides that bit. So when you add them together, 5 has to divide the sum of them as well. So this shows that this is an equivalence relation. And basically that's why it makes sense for us to write it as A is congruent to B mod 5. And that's why, we'll see later, that's why it makes sense for us to do modular arithmetic using only a very small number of numbers. So if we're doing modular arithmetic mod 5, we can just use the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We don't have to use any more. And we'll see later that this is actually because this is an equivalence relation. So what we'll see is that if you have an equivalence relation, then your set gets partitioned very neatly up into different parts, each of which are related to each other. So the example we had before was being at school with someone. So if you take, if you take everyone in the world, using the relation of being at school with someone, if you put all the people who are at this school in this subset, you can put all the people who are at this school into that subset, all the people who are at that school into that subset, and so on. And then there'll be a whole lot of people who aren't at any school at all, so they'll be in little subsets of their own. And you'll have kind of divided up the entire world into sets of people who are at school with each other, which is kind of like dividing it up into schools. And this is called taking equivalence classes. And that's a very important thing that we can do with equivalence relations.